And um, I read this this morning, actually, and I just thought it was appropriate to share with you all. It said, life is not a competition that you have to win. It is not supposed to be a rat race. Life is a huge privilege and an opportunity. God has trusted each one of us with gifts and abilities which he wants us to use. We use them or we lose them. He is faithful to us and he wants us to be faithful to him. So let's worship together our faithful God.
Bef before we go to our next worship song, um, Nathan's just going to come out and share a testimony of something that happened last night, which was just still blows my mind as to how it all came into being. So just come and share this. So incredible. Thanks, Phil. So yeah, as the evening uh, was in full swing yesterday and such a great uh, feeling of the Holy Spirit being present and I was just sat praying and it was at the time where they were swearing you in. Is that the right word? <laughs> charging, charging, yeah. Well, uh, I knew it was a weird word. I knew it was a weird word. And um, a, a guy who I sort of vaguely recognised called Andrew stood behind Phil and he was the first one to speak. I sort of recognised him, but I didn't know where from. And then he started to speak over Phil and saying, actually, what you're going to do will go across, uh, beyond borders, uh, beyond seas. And um, I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then he started mentioning um, that the first time he ever heard Phil's name was on a flight to Cologne, uh, Germany. And the flight had been delayed for four hours. And there was a stag do there. And uh, there'd been a bit of a, a kerfuffle. And um, he ended up sitting next to uh, a very drunk Christian who, who started talking to him about the Lord and about Phil. And uh, that guy was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was stood there and I wanted to grab, I didn't want it to be about myself, so I tried keeping it as much as myself, even though my face painted the picture. Um, and uh, I wanted the ground to swallow me, but gladly, God is a good, good God, and he was full of grace, Andrew, and didn't mention how actually bad I was on that day. <laughs> Because um, we'd been drinking for a long time and, um, you know, it was the, the stag do and uh, we'd been in this little lounge area and we'd come out and one of the Hells Angels guys uh, uh, blasphemed against God when I walked past for whatever reason and I just lost it. Um, obviously, being drunk and not sober-minded, I, I just went for them. And um, luckily, I had uh, friends who were normally not very... Um, uh, well behaved, they were well behaved and dragged me away and I actually sat next to Andrew and, uh, and started speaking to him about um, my faith and I apologised for my behaviour and I was so ashamed and I felt instant uh, you know, uh, regret uh, in that situation. And it just reminds me that even in our worst state, that was probably the most embarrassing story anyone could ever come out with since i became a Christian. But in that, God still moves. God still moves because we are his people we are his royal priesthood and even when we are fallen and at that time I'm, I'm eating with the pigs you know I'm, 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 I'm in the trough you know I'm, I'm drunk I'm thinking yes get to Germany let's party let's you know, um, you know have a I don't really get drunk anymore I haven't since that day other than my wedding day um, but yeah so even amongst that God still moved and um, God was reminding me and um, of how I come to the Lord and, you know, a guy uh, evangelizing and then me running to Phil. And he even says in the Bible, Philip took um, Jesus to Nathan and um, Jesus knew his name and he knows all of our names. He knows every single one of your names. And God, uh, Jesus said to Nathan, you know, you're, you're so um, amazed that I know your name. You won't believe the wonders I have in store for you. And um, that is so true, and it's going to continue to be more and more true. So no matter where you're at, you know, Phil's on this mountain at the moment, and it's amazing, it's such a, a, an honour to stand alongside him and serve and see this grow with Becky as well. But no matter where we are in, in God's body, in the church, God is always with you. Thank you. What's incredible about that story is I, I don't know Andrew. So Mike had invited Andrew to come in because he's got a prophetic gift and to pray for me. And I'm sitting there and he starts saying about this guy. And I, and I, and I have to say, when he was saying that, I was sitting there, I was thinking, ah, but it could have been any Phil Morgan, you know? It's like, how do you, how do you link it to me, you know? And, uh, but it blew me away and uh, so encouraging. It's not, obviously not about me. It's not about like a puffed up thing, but it's, it's just incredible of how God, like Nathan was standing there, Andrew was there, and he was prophesying this, and he was, the, he was the guy. He was just absolutely incredible. God is good. Isn't he? So that's our next. I want to 
in the simple gospel and I will rejoice in you Lord. Well, I, um, oh, it's so weird this is, isn't it? <laughs> it's so strange. Um, well, I'll, I'll take that. <clears throat> I, um, I had my vision talk planned out for us as a church this morning. I'd written it all out. I'd gone over it and meditated on it and had it planned. And I came, I came into the church building very early because that's what I like to do. And it's a bit difficult to find a space to kind of pray in the house with, with our situation and that. And so I thought, you know, I'll come up the building to pray. And as I came here, I opened up my Bible to the scripture I was going to use for my vision talk. And my Bible opened on a scripture. And it hit me for six, this scripture did. I mean, I was drawn to it. And this doesn't happen often to me when I preach. I do like to be prepared. <laughs> but I, I felt compelled to pray. So, you know, I was praying for you and I just felt, I felt I just felt an overwhelming sense that I needed to maybe park up some of this stuff for next week and go with what God's Spirit is leading me to speak on this morning. I've got to go with it. I mean, um, I, I just feel compelled that this word is significant for, for us all, but for key people as well. So I'm going to pray because that's what I need right now is God's Holy Spirit to just be on this scripture that I'm going to bring to us. So, Father, I just ask you now in the name of Jesus that you would use me as a vessel to speak your word and that your word, God, would touch hearts, lives, and set people free and bring revelation and grace where needed. Lord, let this be all about you, you. Holy Spirit, let this be all about you. Would you be present in power to set people free and to touch lives this morning? In Jesus' name we ask with faith and with expectancy. Amen. So, the scripture I have is from Isaiah, chapter 57. And as I was on my knees praying, I just felt like the Lord say, go back there. And I went back there, and I started to read it. And I'm going to read it to you now. It says this, Isaiah 57, verse 14. And it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the road Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people, for this is what the high and the lofty one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy, he says, I live in a high and holy place, but also with the person who's contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to re revive the heart of the contrite. It starts off by saying, build up, build up, prepare the road. For the last two years, we have been in a pandemic which has shocked and shook every part of our lives. And church, church didn't know what to expect when the pandemic hit us. And it's weird that my first day today is the day where we don't have to wear masks. And I feel like God is just in this. He's saying something to us today. That church, it's time to build up. It's time to build up what God is doing. And part of what I was going to speak on for my vision talk today was the two things that I felt like was important. Was prayer and worship. You know, prayer and worship is how we connect to God, isn't it? It's how we plug into him. It's where we experience his Holy Spirit, his voice. It's when, it's when, it's when we're in those, when, it's when we're close to God, that's when we start to sense him and feel him and hear him. But when we're distant from him, when we walk backward and backward and backward and backward and backward, that presence and that voice, it, it, it just drifts away. And, and the pandemic has caused us to be distant from each other, physically, 
distant from each other, masks and social distancing and all this other stuff. And I think God has been working in the midst of all of this, preparing our foundation and our heart for a new thing that he wants to do with his people, not just in coastlands, but across the globe. I believe with what's happening in Ukraine and what's happening with the world, God is preparing his church for these end days for something great and significant. He really wants to do a brand new thing. And he wants to shift and change all that we've been used to and comfortable in. And he wants to build something new. And it's just been on my heart for us as a church. The, more, the day I walked in here um, 10 years ago, when Gerwin was pastor, uh, I never really knew Gerwin, but he seemed like a tremendous guy. And what, a, what, a, what a tremendous guy. And I feel so important that we recognize him this morning for he still has people here who come to this church. What a legacy that man's left. And what a great guy. Thank God for him. And, and, and I walked in here and I had a vision of, a, of the whole room on their knees before God. It was such a clear vision. I walked here, I sat there, and I had this picture. And do you know what I recognized in this picture? Is that the, everyone was deeply connected to God and deeply connected to each other. There was a, this picture just screamed unity with God, unity with each other, and humility. That was the three things that this vision showed me. And I feel the fulfillment of that is coming in these days ahead, where God is going to bring us to a place where we're ready for His Spirit to work in us in power. That's what it's going to take to reach this world that is so lost. This, this, this world that we live in, in our generation, is a, is, is a world that needs truth, love, compassion and the power of the gospel to transform their lives and God has chosen his church to be the vehicles and the demonstrators of his message he has allowed us to participate in a work that he and he alone wants to do and that is through his holy spirit so the word says build up build up and it's on our hearts we're going to meet as a leadership team this week that you know, we want to reintroduce a, a culture of prayer, a culture, not just a prayer meeting, but a rhythm of prayer. Oh, gosh, I see my reflexes out there. My Bible is going. But a, but a culture of prayer, a, 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 um, a, kind of, a kind of unity where we all realize the importance of what it means to press into God in this season. Where we, where we have a prayer meeting, where we, we don't just pray for our shopping list, but we pursue God. We pursue to know him. We pursue his Holy Spirit to transform us. That's the, that's the objective of our prayer. Not to, We pray about other things, and, and that's great, and we do it. But there is a focused attention that God wants us to shift onto in this new season, and that's to know him, and that's to experience him, and to know his Holy Spirit. So we want to, we want to, we know that worship is important. We know that, we know that it's been Oh, having worship here yesterday was such a, oh, yes, I just, just wanted to bathe in the, the atmosphere of God's presence. It was great. And, and, and it's key. Every church is key. We don't worship worship, but we worship the God within our worship. And we want to have, we want to rebuild a worship team. We don't have a current worship leader in this church, but we have faith that God is going to just build a team that is not just a team, but a team that is sensitive to God, a team that is willing to listen to what God is saying, a team that is submissive to the Holy Spirit. So it's our heart that we're praying and pray with us for this in this season, for God to just bring forward the team that God has called for this new season. But, but going back to prayer, prayer, you know, it's gonna, it's, it's prayer is what is going to unlock something significant in this church. Every church has a season where God calls them to prayer before he, he does something new. It's always been the case. You look through history, the Bible, and from our own experiences, God brings us to a place where he says, pray now because I'm going to do something. And that's where he meets us, and he wants to meet us as a church through this culture of prayer. So more detail will follow on what that means, but I want to set the tone 
because that is where God is leading and directing us as a leadership for you guys to connect to him through prayer and to build things up. There's so many things that are on our heart as a leadership that we want to build up, but we must not get ahead of ourselves or get too crazy and like, right, get this in place, get that in place. I feel like we need to go with the Spirit in his direction, in his time, and in his way. And he's calling us in this season to, re to build up that culture of prayer and worship. These are the foundations for us to connect with God. When you don't connect with the community first, you connect with God, as, as Mike and the leadership team have been saying for years, is that love God, love people. It's God first. And then it's God connecting us together. And then it's God bringing us uh, and, and making us a people that are bright and shining for this world to look at and say, what is different about you? What is it that you have in this season where everything is chaos and dark, but you've got something that I don't have? And we can say it's Jesus. Amen? It's Jesus. It's not us. It's not our programs and our clever inventions, although they come through Jesus. And they always do come through Jesus. So build up, build up that culture of prayer and that worship. Here's the second thing he wants to say to us today. And I feel this is, this is an intimate thing that God is going to do in this meeting this morning. He wants to speak to us as individuals as well. He's saying, remove the obstacles that are on my pathway. You see, the Holy Spirit is sensitive. Yeah, we can be saved, we can be Christians, we can have our, our faith and come to church, but there's a level of knowing God. And that's a special level. That's a level where the Holy Spirit is in control of our lives. And this is where God is calling us to be, church, through prayer, through worship, empty vessels, where the Holy Spirit wants to fill us and work through us. But you know, sometimes there's so many obstacles that can get in our way. And something God spoke to me this morning when I was sitting there reading, I felt like the Lord saying, there's going to be people here this morning. No, that's what I said. I said, Lord, what are these obstacles? And I felt like the Lord saying, look at your life, Phil. The biggest obstacle we face in our lives is we fail to trust and believe God and his promises. But when we fail to do that, we also get entangled into other things. And the devil, uh, the enemy, and our own sinful nature is what's weak in this, is that it, we, 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 we are dependent on things. And I feel like the Lord showed me very clearly that in the pandemic, over the last two years, there have been people that have been entangled like, 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 like um, brambles all around them and they feel rigid and they can't really let or hear or feel the sense of God's presence in their lives. And God is saying, this morning, he wants to cut some of those things off of our lives. He wants to address them today. There's been things that you've been stuck in. There's things that you have just felt that you cannot press forward into God because of this thing in my life. And the devil has lied to you and said, you're stuck there. You're not going anywhere. And the Lord wants to set people free this morning. And he wants to say, the obstacle that's in your way, I want to address. I think I get, I get, I sense that there's some people standing in front of some ob obstacles and they're just staring at them. And you were going so well in your faith, but suddenly you stopped. And the Holy Spirit wants to do this in all of us. He wants to just create a clear channel, a clear pathway for him to work. He loves you. He called you. You're, you're his son and daughter. He has not forsaken you or abandoned you. Don't listen to that lie. But the obstacles in your lives is what's holding you back right now. And God wants to set you free of these things. Dependency, alcohol, dependency on substances, dependency on stuff that we watch on telly, things, offenses that we hold against people that have hurt us, bitterness and forgiveness. Adultery. There's things that the Holy Spirit's gentle here. He's saying, I don't want to condemn you or, or, or judge you, but I want to set you free. I want to bring something to your life which is better than what you're holding on to. 
And the Lord is saying to us this morning, before we step over as a church together in unity, before we meet with God in this culture of prayer, there's some obstacles in our way. That's in our hearts and in our lives. And the Lord wants to cut them. He wants to sever them. And the next part of the scripture, he says this. Hmm. For this is what the, the Lord says. I'm going to paraphrase it. So God is high and holy and lofty. He lives. He's greater than the galaxies. The Bible says he measures the universe in the span of his hand. How vast, how big, how awesome, how great this God is. The created planets far, far greater than small earth. And yet he looks on small earth and he looks at the small people and he says, I love you. And although I live up there in the glory, I want to live in your heart and in your life. But the, but, but, but the vessel that I want to live in is a humble one. The vessel that I want to live in is one that is of humility. Do you know what? I feel the Holy Spirit on this this morning. The Holy Spirit is saying to us today that he's attracted to humility. He's saying that he's, he's, he's looking, he's scoping. He's attracted to humility. He's looking for that place, that place of residence where he can rest, where the dove can rest on that humble and contrite heart. And you know, pride is what gets us, gets in the way of this happening. I feel like pride, pride, do you know what pride is? Pride is self-reliance, self-dependence. Pride is, I don't need to listen to this. I don't need to listen to God. I can do this myself. That's what pride is. Pride is a pathway of self-righteousness and self-rights. And the Holy Spirit wants to rest on humble people, people who are willing just to let them let their lives be empty again. Church, I'm saying this, because I believe God is saying this, is that God is looking for empty vessels in us as a people and in our lives. He's looking for it. And so he's attracted to that humility. And here's the final part as we build this culture of prayer and worship and as we empty ourselves and allow him to come and take residence in us as we become dependent again on God he's saying I'm going to revive you now this is the clear word that I had in my heart for us today is that God wants to visit us as a people I truly believe that the Holy Spirit wants to visit us in a tangible way now you can walk into some churches and sense a bit of the presence and you can walk into some churches and feel nothing of the presence. And you can walk into a church and you're like, oh my goodness, God is here. And it's scary. And yet it's attractive. And it's humbling. And I want more. And that is what God wants to do here in this new season. This world needs a light on the hill. Barry needs a light on a hill that's shining out. And we can have all our little religious agendas and come to church and pay our little tithe and think that's, that's it. But that's not what God is calling us to in this season. He's calling us to a place of emptiness and filling of power and filling of his, his might and destroying all obstacles that will get in the way of God working. That's what he's calling us to. I, I, I'm going to pray this morning. I, I feel like I've said enough. I, 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 I could talk on some other things, but I, I just feel like enough of me. I feel like God wants to meet people here today. I really do. And I want us to just, just to be, just to be in, in, the, in the presence of God. So pray with me. Pray with me this morning as I feel the Holy Spirit's really here. And I feel like he wants to speak to key individuals as well. Let's just wait on him. Holy Spirit, come. Please do what only you can do. In Jesus' name. So be it.
I feel very clear this morning that there is some people the Lord wants to meet and I'm going to ask you to, to come out and I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray for people this morning. I sense that there is there's some things, there's just obstacles that have just stopped you dead in your track. And, and God has been speaking to you about this stuff. And I'm going to ask you to be willing to respond to God this morning. So I'm going to make an altar call and I'm just going to ask some people to come forward. You don't have to name what this obstacle is, but God is naming it. And there's some obstacles, and I'm trying to ask you if, there, if you, if you feel that there's an obstacle that's been in your life, and you feel convicted of it this morning, and want God to set you free, will you come forward? Will you come forward? And God, want, I want to pray for you. Will you come and stand?
outside you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found Thank you for listening today. Um, we hope you've had a good morning with us. Um, we hope you have a really blessed week ahead. And just to remind you that we are here. If you need us, if you need prayer, if you need to chat to somebody, please, please contact us. And we would love uh, to just make that contact with you. Okay, so take care and God bless. See you next week.